I am obviously acutely aware uh, that my presence at this podium uh, represents a few firsts. Uh, I am a black gay immigrant woman, the first of all three of those to hold this position. I would not be here today if it were not for generations of barriers, pe barrier breaking people before me. I stand on their shoulders. If, if it were not for generations of barrier, barrier breaking people before me, I would not be here. But um, I benefit from their sacrifices. I have learned from their ex ex excellence, and I am forever grateful to them. Representation does matter. You hear us, you hear us say this uh, often in this administration, and no one understands this better than President Biden. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, there's this thing that's going on, an interesting trend in which foreign countries uh, in their state-owned propaganda TV networks are openly roasting the Biden administration, right? I mean, I did a story before about Saudi Arabia uh, in a TV news station owned by them. They had like an SNL type skit roasting him and Kamala Harris, okay? Uh, again, the Saudis, right? The Saudi government is supposed to be one of our allies, right? And they have a, a state-owned TV uh, show openly roasting the president of the United States, right? Um, yeah, that says a lot about how they're feeling about Joe Biden. Now, lo and behold, this seems to be happening again as a Russian owned TV show is now mocking the White House press secretary, the new one, the affirmative action White House press secretary, the black gay uh, <laughs> immigrant woman uh, for not being a white heterosexual male, <laughs> right? Uh, so they are roasting her because they're basically saying the same exact things that I've been saying in regards to how the Biden administration introduced her to the American people. Uh, they did not lead with her credentials, okay, why she qualified for the job. What they led with was her woke qualifications, which is her skin color, what's between her legs, and who she sleeps with, and whether or not she was actually born in this country, right? Uh, yeah, those are the exact same things that... <laughs> People on the right, conservatives have been saying about Biden's affirmative action higher, okay? And lo and behold, even people on the international stage are seeing this and saying, yeah, this is an embarrassment, right? It is an embarrassment when you are hiring people based off things that have nothing to do with merit, right? We're not the only people that are, that are seeing this, right? Again, it ain't just racist, sexist, homophobic bigotry in the United States. That, that, like, that's not it. Right, that's not the reason why people are criticizing her. It is simply because uh, even our competition, our rivals overseas are like, ah, see, this is kind of stupid, okay? And they're doing this even amidst uh, allegedly losing a war in Ukraine. Um, so you know, hey, uh, it's one of those things that uh, again I want to talk about because I find it be hilarious. But I started not to because I don't know, man. Uh, YouTube is cracking down on what they call. Russian propaganda, okay, and I want to make it clear to uh, the YouTube moderators out there, this is not Russian propaganda, <laughs> this is just comedy, okay, I'm just discussing the news, I'm not even going to play the clip of them uh, roasting up uh, Kareem Jean-Pierre, because one, they're not speaking English, so I feel like it's kind of pointless, uh, but I just want to make it clear, <laughs> this is not Russian propaganda, I'm just reporting the news. So before we get into the Russian state-sponsored <laughs> roast of Ms. Uh, Kareem Jean-Pierre, uh, let's check in on how she did on her second day on the job, because, uh, if you guys remember, I did a video about her first day on the job and <laughs> Peter Ducey, uh, just absolutely destroyed her on her first day. <laughs> she clearly was not prepared. Uh, so let's see if she did a little bit better on, on the second day. Take a look. Yep. Right. Thank you, Crane. A, a follow up to the disinformation board. Last week, you guys said that you needed this disinformation governance board at DHS to make sure that freedom of speech is protected across the country and that these platforms are not used for forms of disinformation. So what changed? Look, the Department of, of Homeland Security, they began their statement report, re, repeating report, re, repeating that the board had been intentionally mischaracterized, which is a little bit of what you were asking me, and they were explicit about what it does and doesn't it does not do. Uh, it was never about censorship, pol policing speech, or removing content from anywhere. As Secretary Marcos said, he has asked uh, former DHS Secretary Michael Chernoff and former D D DAG uh, Jamie Gorlick to lead a 
thorough review, this is the pause that I was talking about, and assessment as members of the Bipartisan Homeland Security Council Advisory Council. The board will not convene during that period, but the departments work across several administrations uh, to address disinformation that threatens uh, the security for our, our country is critical and will continue. So that work is going to continue. So, so if it's pausing because you think the board was mischaracterized, then the disinformation board is being shut down because of disinformation? Is that what's happening here? Look, I mean, the, the board was put forth for a purpose, right? To make sure that we really did a, 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 a uh, really did address what was happening across the country when it came to disinformation. It's just going. It's it's going to pause. There's been a mischaracterizations from outside uh, outside forces, and so now what we're going to do is going to we're going to pause it and we're going to do an assessment. But the work does the work doesn't stop. We're still going to continue the work. The DHS is still going to continue the work. Okay. Americans are now spending five thousand dollars a year on gasoline. That's almost double what they did a year ago. Where are people supposed to go to get all that extra cash? To get the extra cash to pay for gas? Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things that we've been very clear about is to do everything in our power uh, to make sure uh, that we lower costs. Uh, you know, it is important. We see it. The president understands what the American people is are, is going through, uh, and that's why uh, we're doing everything that we can. We've made uh, multiple announcements in the past uh, several several months of what we're doing, whether it's the strategic uh, petroleum reserve, whether it's the ethanol 15, to make sure that uh, that uh, that the American people are not feeling Putin's uh, price hike. This is where this is coming from. 60 to 70 percent of the current price hike that we have seen has come from Putin's aggression against Ukraine. So, so the president announced this on March 31st that he's got all these steps to lower gas prices and it's still Putin's fault seven weeks later. Yeah, so I want to be clear that my criticism of her is not uh, her messing up her words or her grandma or anything like that because I mess up my words my grandma all the time. I'm just saying, my criticism is that um, she doesn't have any good answers, right? She never has an answer to the actual questions. Everything is just read from a script. It is talking points and is not actually addressing the questions that Peter Ducey is asking her, uh, which are legitimate questions, right? They're legitimate questions, right? When it comes to the whole disinformation board thing, she basically said that a disinformation board was shut down <laughs> because of disinformation. What? <laughs> right? Ain't that the purpose of the board, right? The purpose of the board uh, is to fight against disinformation. So you get your disinformation board <laughs> shut down. <laughs> Because of disinformation. Again, it makes no sense. Okay, and then she's repeating the talking points from the Biden White House about gas prices, right? Trying to blame it on Putin uh, instead of, you know, Biden's, you know, American last uh, energy policies, right? Which definitely contribute and also the fact that he's ruined our relationship with Saudi Arabia, right? Th those are the two main factors. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my criticism of her have to do more with the fact that she, she just simply is just lying and not answering questions, right? Which is the same thing that Jen Psaki did. She's just worth it, worse at it. So let's read about the roast of Miss Kareen Jean Pierre because I find this to be absolutely hilarious. The hosts of a Russian nightly talk show have taken aim at new White House press secretary Kareen Jean Pierre for being the first black gay woman to hold the position. Miss Jean Pierre took to the podium of the White House briefing room on Monday to hail barrier breaking people who she said had enabled her to reach the position despite being black and LGBTQ+. Addressing the appointment of Miss Jean-Pierre this week, host of the state-owned Russia One Channel said the 47-year-old had not been chosen or married and ridiculed her for not being white heterosexual male. <laughs> Quote, she admits to not being chosen for professional abilities, said Andrei uh, Sorachik, a political analyst, to his co-host because she is a dark-skinned immigrant, etc., and this was secured by her predecessors. Yeah, I mean, that's true, right? Uh, she admits that she was not chosen because of her uh, professional capabilities. <laughs> she, she wasn't chosen because of that. She wasn't chosen because of school that she went to or, you know, the work that she'd done in the past. They mentioned that stuff, but they mentioned that last, as if that's the least important. What they mentioned first was... Uh, the color of her skin, who she likes to sleep with, and whether or not she's from the United States, right? That's what they mentioned, okay? Um, and what's between her legs as well, too, right? I forgot about that, okay? All those things they mentioned, they did not start off with 
her actual real qualifications. And this is why I try to tell people, man, when people see this stuff, this is what they're subconsciously thinking about. And it is a disservice to black people when <laughs> woke white liberals do this, okay? He continued, and when she makes mistakes, that will be her excuse. I'm not a professional. I was chosen for other reasons. Yeah, and she will also blame racism, right? She'll say Peter Ducey is racist for asking her tough questions. Anybody that criticizes her is criticizing her from a place of racism, not because um, she's just bad at her job. Now, keep in mind, again, um, Jen Psaki got criticism as well, right? She got the same amount of smoke that this lady's going to get. Evgeny Povo, a member of Russia's parliament and TV propagandist, said earlier in the segment that the new White House press secretary would not last. Quote, the girl will make it for a month or two, then she'll be replaced to your satisfaction. They'll replace her with a white heterosexual male, he said, taking aim at her sexuality. Um, I'm not sure if they'll replace her with a white heterosexual male because um, if they fire her, okay, um, the, the Biden administration is going to be accused of racism, right? So they basically can't fire her. OK, um, that's why Joy Reid hasn't been fired yet, because um, you can't fire a, a black uh, liberal woman once you hire them, because if you fire them, then at that point, they're going to accuse you of being racist. So she has to resign. OK, um, so um, I give her a year. Right. I think she'll stay in a position for a year and then she'll be out. OK, because she won't be able to take it. But I'm not necessarily sure they'll replace her with a white man. <laughs> I mean. They might, if, if he's gay, they might replace him with that. But, he, but whoever they replace uh, her with has to have at least one of the affinity stones of wokeness, right? He, he has to have a couple. They would have to have at least one or two of them, right? Now, she has well, all four or five of them, okay? She got all of them, which is exactly why she was chosen. His host, Olga Shabakieva, uh, replied, let's live long enough to see it. I mean, your country's in the middle of a war. I guess that's a good point. Uh, Poval, who last month called on Americans to reelect the former President Donald Trump, argued that Ms. John Pierre also lacked what it takes to represent the White House. Quote, I read many books, graduated from a university. My PhD thesis is on such and such topic. I speak many languages, but that's not what it takes to represent the United States at the White House, he said. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Again, um, isn't that offensive to people who are actually qualified for the job, right, or who actually have credentials? You're looking at this and you're saying... Yeah, um, she doesn't need to have all that because, you know, she's black and LBGTQ and she's a woman. And that's not to say she doesn't have credentials. She obviously does. I think she has like a master's degree or something like that from a good university. And, you know, she's worked in this type of stuff. I I'm, again, I'm not saying that she's not qualified. What I'm saying is, is that I would not know if she's qualified based off how they introduced her, how they marketed her. That's the problem. OK, it's the same problem with Biden's affirmative action Supreme Court nominee. The only reason I'm saying that she's an affirmative action Supreme Court nominee is not because she's black and she's a woman. It's because Biden told us that she was an affirmative action Supreme Court nominee by telling us he chose her because she's black and she's a woman. It's really that simple. The host laughed as he said it was more important to look like her and added at least she's cute. Well, I don't necessarily know if I would uh, agree with that. I, I don't necessarily find her to be very attractive. OK, and that ain't because she's black. Right. It's not because she's black. I just don't you know, she's just not my cup of tea. Uh, Daily Beast columnist Julia Davis, who shared the video with English subtitles late on Wednesday, described the attack on Miss Jean-Pierre as pretty uh, typical for bigoted Russian television. Uh, quote, Kremlin propagandists on uh, Russian state TV give a warm welcome to White House Press Secretary Jean Karine Jean-Pierre, wrote Davis, who monitors Russian media. This revealing clip reveals racism. Sexism and homophobia, it's pretty typical for bigoted Russian television, but don't watch it if you have high blood pressure. <laughs> While dozens of Twitter users agreed with her analysis, uh, the journalist added that Fox News' Tucker Carlson had a similar issue, very similar statements last week questioning the new uh, press secretary credentials. Uh, Kareem John Pierre is our first LGBTQ plus White House press secretary. That's all you need to know. Carson told viewers, it's a good thing. Shut up and celebrate. That's why she got the job. I mean, look, I'm saying the same thing and I'm black, right? Am I racist? Am I a racist, sexist, homophobic bigot for saying that? No. Because objectively, anybody who's not caught up in woke wonderland uh, can see that, you know what, this person got the job because of uh, everything that has nothing to do with her actual real credentials, right? And I I'm, again, I'm sick and tired of them doing this because it is a disservice to black people when Democrats and woke white liberals do this, when they introduce their minority hires in a way that doesn't, that, that doesn't highlight why they're actually qualified for the job, right? Things that actually have to do with why they got the job. 
Okay, because it makes people think subconsciously where they only got a job because they're, you know, a woman or because they're black or whatever. Okay, they're really doing a disservice to uh, qualified uh, black folks and so-called uh, non-white candidates out there. Okay, that's what, what has happened. And even our foreign adversaries can see how ridiculous it is to hire people based off things that have nothing to do with merit. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.